Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the Belmont card for Belmont Stakes Day, Saturday, June 11th. Um, I'm doing this one day in advance, so the usual disclaimers apply. Uh, make sure that the odds are resembling what you uh, what you think they're going to be. Uh, we do have some early morning line action on some of these races, so we're at least going to have some idea of what's going on. But an overwhelming majority of the money comes in tomorrow, obviously. So, you know, uh, I'll try to give you some guidelines as to what I feel is appropriate. And uh, again, uh, the usual disclaimers, uh, you know, I'm doing this just for the true DFS people. I, I, the people that actually do follow on YouTube are going to get this as well. I just decided to give this away a couple of times when I feel like it. Um, I just couldn't think of, my life of ever a way to charge for my my horse racing stuff because what's going to happen is uh, I would feel I don't know I feel tempted not tempted but I would feel that I don't want to give my picks away if people are just going to bet them and ruin my price you know and a lot of the times where I'm betting on stuff it's at tracks where you know if, if someone out there is going to just pile on something that I give them it's just it's just giving way too much money away. But what I have decided is that on big days like this, where nothing is really going to affect my price, it doesn't really matter to me at all. And from time to time, on some of the smaller slates, uh, I'll throw some stuff out there uh, until I see that people are affecting my price. Uh, I'm going to keep doing it. Again, not nothing any schedule. I mean, just whenever I feel like doing it, I will. Uh, I don't want to go over my entire resume about betting horses. That's for another time. Just trust me that if you do what I say, you're going to, you're going to be putting yourself in plus EV spots. And the other thing I will promise you is that it might take you seven lifetimes to realize those that ROI, because I'm almost always going to be giving you kind of underdogs. But uh, anyway, uh, if you're going to play the card anyway, you may as well have an edge. And that's, got, that's just what I'm going to be giving you. That's all I can promise. And again, if you do want to sign up to bet on courses using XB select, do so and put in the promo code true DFS. Um, I'm sure they'll send me like a coffee mug or something like that if you sign up. Uh, anyway, um, let's go through the card here. And I'm not going to go as in-depth as I did for the uh, Derby, which is probably a good thing because I still, I'm still waiting for my horse to finish the Derby from like six weeks ago. Um, that's how poor it was. Actually, that's not true. Um, but there are some pretty good values and some pretty good things to go over here. And we do have something really strong in the Belmont Stakes as well. But let's go through the whole card. There are 11 races. I have something in most of the races to share with you. So in the first race, there are three horses that are extremely strong values as far as I'm concerned. And those would be the one, two, three, Vincent, Quick Flash, and last mission. my last mission. Um, I don't, I'm not going to go through the sheets. I'm not going to you know, go through all the, in, in the in-depth analysis. I'm just going to just leave you with the picks today, if you don't mind. Um, but uh, one, two, and three, if they're anything resembling these prices, they're really, really strong. There's certainly nothing particularly wrong with win for gold. Um, I, as a matter of fact, win for gold, I consider the most likely winner. But um, it's not going to win all the time. And it's just coming off a pretty big effort. And if it bounces, you want to have something that, that, that can pick up the pieces. And I think that a good 30% of the time, um, win for gold is going to bounce, meaning run poorly. And in those 30% of the times, I think the one, two, and three are just as good as anybody else. So uh, I think the one, two, and three is a kind of a strong bit of value to start off your, uh, start off your day. Um, in the second race, I actually just had a cold, I guess, exacta for you here. Um, I don't, I don't think that the, uh, that the, the I think the favorite, well, Hold on a second here. Let me let me just give this another look because I was I was gonna say that the favorite looked really tough to beat, but yeah. So bright future is really tough. Um, uh, I don't know if I particularly want to try to beat this thing, but um, there is somebody that I would play for second that I think is worth it, and that would be Uncle Moonlight at ten to one. Um, as a matter of fact, just just for fun. I am probably going to play Uncle Moonlight on top as well. And I'll probably play him in kind of bomb doubles and triples and things like that. Uh, there's certainly nothing wrong with the three set sail. Certain 
certainly nothing wrong with the eight higher qualities. As a matter of fact, I think they are probably a little more likely to win than Uncle Moonlight, but Uncle Moonlight is um, is just much longer. Um, as a matter of fact, I mean, I think maybe I'm selling the strong quality short a little bit. So yeah, so I, I think that Bright Future is probably is clearly the most likely winner. And then maybe do exact is with Uncle Moonlight and strong quality underneath, but even that might be too chalky. So do I, I'm gonna change my mind. It's a race you're gonna to wanna to pass. Ugh, probably. Oh, well. I was talking myself into just a one-two, but you know what? Two's not that much better than the four. I, know, I guess this race is a pass. Sorry about that. Um, third race. Um, well, <laughs> let's go bombs away. Uh, I like the two inventing. I think that he is probably just as likely to win as the five, who's going to be three to five. Can I tell you? Um, that's who I like. I think that the four might be a little more likely to win than the two, but certainly not to not to make up for that price discrepancy. So I do like the two as a clear key in this race, uh, inventing at 20 to one. Um, fourth race, I have another kind of cold number here. I think that Regal Glory at six to five, I wouldn't bet it to win, but it's going to be really, really difficult to beat. I would say that, oh, so where the value here is that the three, I think, is just really poor. Um, is he poor? Maybe that's not the right way to say it. I just think he's much worse than the two here. Um, as a matter of fact, what I'm inclined to do is to use the one underneath. So I would play the two Regal Glory on top of the one Legs Galore. Um, Legs Galore might have trouble getting this distance, but if it does, if it doesn't, um, it's really just as good as the three. Um, so maybe another race you probably shouldn't be betting, but um, I would I would fade the three. I think the two is clearly the best horse, and if you want to bet an exact, I'd bet the two one. Um, Fifth race, I had no real value here. I had the three, five, and seven all pretty logical. Um, hmm. Race six. So what I wrote down originally was two, three, four, six to beat the favorite. But let's let's take another look at this just before I give this out because this is a really big favorite here. So Jack Christopher, yeah, I mean it's the logical horse. All right, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll change my mind. I'll, I'll just give you one horse. I I, I think the the six at fifteen to one. Uh, I think that's that's good value. Uh, I think all these are okay. The five is decent at a big price. Four is logical, but a little short. Three is a little short. I think the two pop a cap is a very, very strong line. So it's the same thing. You know, if the one loses, the two and the six are just as good as these others. Maybe I'm being too greedy. Maybe you should just bet the one, two, one, six. But I don't know. Screw it. Uh, I, I am gonna I'm gonna give out the six at a big price and the two also, with the knowledge that the one is clearly the best horse and is most likely to win but if he goes off at one to five or something i mean you just have to just take your stand on the two and six here that's what i'm gonna do all right um seventh race seventh race i wrote down four over the one three let me just confirm that um Malt that with a nine yeah i think four is clearly the most likely winner of this race i think three to one is way too much if you can get three to one, definitely bet this. Um, I have it much better than all the other horses. Should I say that? Actually, that's not true. I mean, Latruska is, I would say, equal to the four. So four has a bit of a price advantage. Boy, I was really hoping this was, card was going to be a little bit better. I feel like I'm forcing stuff here, but whatever. Uh, I think the four is probably equal to the one. So if the four is a better price than the one, I would bet. All right, uh, 
eighth race. Eighth race is a war. I mean, it's basically anybody can win. So what I would probably do is just go for go for long shots. Actually, I do have a a, a favorite uh, of these horses. Let me just confirm that. Gregorian Chance on the bottom at eight to one is good. But is it worth keying, especially from the outside post? I don't know. The other thing I looked at is what makes me run. That's 20 to one. That's okay. Ooh, but what is this? Gray's Creek. Yeah, this is this is actually really good at 30 to one. So there's a lot of horses that can win here. This, you know what? I gotta show a little bit of discipline. Like this, this race is just a wheel. I, mean, I, I really wouldn't involve myself in this race. But what I, what I will say is this: if you bet anybody this race, better make sure it's not the favorite. I like the one here. One looks good. One is 15 to one. And then there's the six, one, six. And then I guess the one, six would be my favorite of the long shots. But there's a lot of horses that can win here. All right, race number nine. Race number nine is a horse that's going to be one to five here. Um, it's probably going to win. It's it's got three just insane races sprinting, and now it's going long. So if you're the type that doesn't believe that that horse can get the distance, then maybe you could play the two, the three, the four, pretty much anybody else. It's actually not the five, but it's unfortunately just a race you're probably going to have to pass. Um, all right, tenth race. So here I like some long shots. Um, and I also like some middlers. So, so the, the horse I like the best as far as price goes, I like Le Imprator at 15 to one from the one hole. And then I like the um, six Rock Emperor at 10 to one. And then, it, you know, some reasonable horses, Santin's pretty good and Channel Maker's pretty good, but Santin's short. So I would say Channel Maker, and Le Imprator would be my two favorites, followed by La Rock Emperor. So again, 110, followed by the uh, six and the nine. Nine's a little short, but that's okay. Um, because we are pairing them up into the uh, Belmont. And in the Belmont stakes, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I, I for those of you that followed this in the previous, uh, we're going right back with the same horse. Um, so number two, Skippy Longstocking is going to be my selection in the Belmont Stakes. Um, it looks really, really strong. Um, it's 20 to one. It's just way too long. Um, is it the most likely winner? I do think it's close. So, so I, I think that it's between Skippy Longstocking and Mo Donegal. Mo Donegal looks, I have to say, looks really, really good. Um, uh, Michael uh, Baychock from our, our Discord, he, he, he really likes this horse a lot. And, and I, I agree. I, I think it is probably the most likely winner, Mo Don Donegal, but I don't care. I, I, am, I am definitely giving out Skippy Longstocking as my favorite overall value in this race. And there's two other horses I want to identify here. So I'd like that the three horse nest in eight to one to kind of, you know, get into the exacta or the trifecta or whatever. And the other one I want to give out is another one that, that our friend Michael talked about in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, in the Discord, and that would be Golden Glider. I think he's extremely live here. Um, I don't think he quite has enough to get the win, but I think that he could definitely get into this number. So um, you could get really lucky here and get a 2-7 exact home for all of the cheese. Um, so what I would do is I would play two, three, six, seven. I'm not playing the one for a cent. I'm not playing the four for a cent. And, and that's what I'm going to do. Um, that will do it for the Belmont Stakes and the uh, supporting card. Good luck, everybody. I'm probably not even be able to watch it. I'm going to be doing something. Um, actually, I'll throw it up on my phone. But uh, if you, anybody hits it, anybody does anything good, um, throw it in the Discord, throw it in the comments, and good luck.